in building relationships that last. It begins with improving one's self-esteem, looking beyond face value, and choosing the right partner. You too can have the marriage of your dreams. I dated my wife for 10 years before we got married. Nah, I salute you. <laughs> Is it advisable for courtship to be long? You are the one that should be telling us. <laughs> if you dated that for the very way. You should tell us if, 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 it, if it was a good decision. You should be telling us. <laughs> Praise God. But it's a good question. Um, and you need to understand this. Just because somebody did something in a certain way, and I like the, I like the honesty of this guy, just because something happened in a certain way doesn't mean, because some people will turn this thing to mean that's the best way to make it happen. It's, it's not, 10 years courtship is absolutely, in fact, the only thing that should be long up to 10 years is maybe your commitment in marriage, that's your, you are married for 10 years, or you are in a church for 10 years. Nothing else, even school should not be for 10 years. Any, nothing, there's nothing else that should be long 10 years. It's too long. So it's obviously it's long. It shows that either you guys entered when you were not ready. Is it, the whole idea of courtship is not for, is it, the whole idea of courtship is not just for the sake of courtship. The reason why we enter courtship is because we are ready to marry. Do you understand? Many people, what, 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 what many people want is a girlfriend. And, and that's a worldly perspective. You are coming from the world and you think, I must have babe. Mm -mm. In the kingdom of God, the reason why you enter that kind of relationship with a lady is to marry. And that means for you to enter a relationship, you are, you are ready to marry. You are, you are, I mean, the reason why you are even coming to talk to her is because you want to marry. Not because you just want to be carrying her about. So, but many people enter, they're not ready to marry. Just enter, I say, it's my girlfriend. My, my say, one day, I'll marry you one day, one day. Mm. And the sad thing now, the, the, the downside to it is that if a guy dates you 10 years, this guy was even honest and good enough to marry the girl. Some people will date you for that 10 years, eh? And they will come to tell you a story. I say, the Lord, I dreamt yesterday. <laughs> eh? You know, dream 10 years. Now, 10 years, after 10 years, now you dream. You better go and sleep again. And correct that dream. <laughs> Some people will date you for that 10 years. Oh. Maybe you guys started when you were 25. You are now 35. Yes, 10 years. Then the guy will say he's not marrying again. The guy can bounce back and marry somebody the next week. But you as the lady that you are now 35. Everybody already knew you with somebody. And they just jabber you. The likelihood that you will see somebody very fast is slim. So most times ladies are the ones that are left hanging. And I, I know people, and this is not just these people I know personally. A guy that dated a girl for over 15 years. If I dated one first for about 10 or so or more years, they didn't marry. Yes. Sir. They didn't marry. Then he dated on that one again. Uh, the girl, the first one got tired of waiting and just left and ran away and went to marry somebody else. She, she delivered herself. So he entered on that one with on that girl and they stayed for about 15 years. They were celebrating the anniversary of the relationship every year. When somebody doesn't celebrate anniversary of the relationship, you know that he's not planning to change. So... 15 years. After they dated for under 15 years, they still didn't marry. Mm. This is real life. Not uh, somebody told me. People I know. So, as a girl, one of, I have a message tied to seven questions wise women ask. One of the questions as a girl you must ask a guy that is saying, I want to marry you, I like you, is when. I want to marry, I want to marry you. Ask him when. Because his timing might not work with your timing. Most of the women are so, they are too excited about marriage. They don't think through. So the guy is out to marry. He say, "Yes, yes, yes, I agree." Ask him when. The timing might not work with you. If he wants to marry you in twenty years' time, does that work for you? Eh, we don't have an agreement. You tell him go, come back in twenty years. If I'm still single, but I pray I won't be single. So we want to marry me when? Is it this year? How many years? How many months? You can, you won't tie yourself down for a guy that is saying he's going and coming five years. You will not miss all the other people that will come in between. No. I believe if you are approaching a girl for marriage, you should have marriage in view at least in a year. Worst case, a year and six months, you should already have it in view. Not that you now enter courtship and now start doing courtship. Oh, courtship. Oh, courtship. Ah, no. What somebody says, used to study medicine and become a specialist. <laughs> or become a lawyer. Even don't become judge. When I see they do courtship. 
<laughs> so I don't advise it. There are too many complications in it. Of course, in that 10 years, the temptation to sleep with each other will be too much. After a while, you can even start losing your orientation. I don't tire for myself because you're not moving forward. When anything is stagnant, people get tired. So too many complications. A lady is pregnant for me. Thank you. <laughs> but I don't have the intention of marrying her. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> of course, it's not by force. Ah. Did you tell you wanted to marry people? He has a right to do that. I, I, I don't intend to marry her because I have another lady that I want to marry. Yes? Women don't know these things. Will it be wrong if I don't marry the lady that is pregnant for me? It's not wrong, though. You don't have to marry her. Pregnancy is not a reason to marry. It's not a reason to marry. Many people have married because... And I, I, in, in my 20 years of counseling, I've seen many people that married. They didn't like each other to marry you. They just married because they were one point got pregnant. And throughout that marriage, the guy will be abusing you. You will trap my life. Even if they don't abuse you, they'll be feeling that resentment inside their mind. That is not the guy I want to marry you. See, one of the worst things you can do to yourself is to enter a marriage with somebody that doesn't want to be in that marriage with you. Many ladies don't see, like, let's say if I just force him, he will change, he will like me. No. See, men are not like, if a man doesn't like you, there is absolutely nothing you can do to make him like you. You need to understand that. Men are hunters. They, they, they are used to chasing something. If, he, if he's not chasing you, he will never chase you. Women need to understand. Women think, ah, if I'm antelope, what if I go to a spot myself and jump to the pot? What if I just cut my own neck and put pepper? What if I just cook myself? He might eat the pepper soup, but he will still not like you. They are not linked. Sex and love are separated in a man's mind. They are not the same thing. Most women think, if he's sleeping with me, it means he loves me. No. Men sleep with prostitutes. Do they love them? Sex and mar love or marriage, they are not the same with men. So for you as a woman, it's better to protect yourself in not sleeping with a guy that you know you cannot marry or that is not planning to marry you. In fact, if you do sleep with a guy, if you're not even married, that's all. Okay, so if the person asking this question, you have to first repent. From your question, I didn't see any part where you are sorry about what you did. You are very committed to this issue. So you have to first repent. What you did is bad. To be sleeping with somebody when you have somebody else you want to marry, to the point where you impregnated the girl. So it shows that you, you, you need to, I don't even know if you are born again. I will call for people that want to give their life after service. You should give your life to Christ. Uh -huh. So, you know, you, you, need to, you need to work on your character. You're not, you're not yet thinking, you know, you don't understand the gravity of what you have done. You have rendered somebody a child that will have a present father. You have rendered somebody that will be a child that will grow up without a home, a covering of a home and the mentoring of a home. So you have done something really, 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 really bad. I need you to know that. And unfortunately, it's not a mistake you can even correct if the baby is already there. So you, you are, I need to let you know you have done something really bad. Okay? But at the same time, the truth is that you don't have to marry the girl if you don't want to. Pregnancy is not a reason to marry someone. Because two of you will just frustrate yourselves and hate yourselves while you are there. The person was somebody you like. It's love that should make you marry, not pregnancy. Okay? If you have a child already outside with luck, you can be paying the bills for the child. I'm trying to be there for the child. But don't marry somebody. Don't join yourself with somebody for life just because the person got pregnant for you. The guy was raising his hand. Can I take your question? Good evening, sir. Yeah. My question goes like this. Uh, I have a friend who is uh, 34 by age and a lady that is 39 yeah. by, by age as well. And they are about getting married by okay. December. Okay. I don't know by biblically if it is right okay. for the boy to go ahead. That's a good question. Very good question. Um, we have a message titled, When She's Older, Richer, and Smarter. There's nothing wrong with it. But you can get that message for them to help them. There's nothing wrong with it scripturally, but they need to be prepared for the challenges that can arise from that situation. Because it's not the normal thing, especially in the society. But scripturally, there's nothing wrong with the woman being older. Okay, the woman can be older. But they have to manage issues of respect, issues of submission, and other issues that will arise. Issues of societal pressure. Because they, they, they have to be careful. If they reveal the age difference to some people, some people will just put mouth in what doesn't concern them. And society, people will gossip about them. People will come and tell that the girl just chants the boy. Different things. 
So they must be ready and prepared for what they can face. But scripturally, in the sight of God, there's nothing wrong. You can marry a girl older than you. There's nothing wrong with that. Challenges, you have to just know what the challenges are. Aging differences. If the girl is far older, that means she will start aging long before. Though there are challenges you have to be ready for. But scripturally, oh, there's nothing wrong with it. Scripturally. I'm 29, not married, and I'm getting hot. I'm getting pressure from my family and friends. I'm very worried, sir. Can you please advise me what to do? The truth is that you, this pressure, you know, is going to be there, but don't let it pressurize you into doing something wrong. Because these same people pressuring you, once you enter the yawa, they will all go to their house. They will not be there. I'm telling you, human beings can be very terrible sometimes. Now then go pressure you, say, no, ah, you must do something. Let me hook you up. They will even put your name on the internet to hook you up. The day you marry one and trouble starts, they also manage night is where is where they won't they won't they will go to their house. The parents that will drive you out when the hour starts, so they will stay in their house. So don't let pressure make you marry priests. Stand your ground. I know you will face pressure, but stand, face the pressure like that. Let them know that you are waiting. If they accept the, the can they create a husband for you? It's God that will connect you now. So you are waiting. Praise God. Let me take one more with the mic. Good evening, sir. Yep. Um, my question goes thus. Um, according to the Bible passage, uh, I can't really remember, but um, when a man sees his wife or catches his wife fornicating, or should I say um, having sex with another man, yes. a- adultery, okay, and he's free to um, divorce her, yeah. what happens to the woman if it's the other way around? If the woman finds, it, her, husband. finds her husband doing yeah. the same thing, if she, is she free to do that? If she wants to. Okay. The divorce is not by force. It, the point is that you have the option. But if, you, if you're a good Christian, you should be able to forgive now and move on. So we're not saying you must go and divorce. But if, you, if that's what you want, you have a right. Do you understand? You have a right to do so, if that's what you want. But in many cases, they discover that that's not what they want. They want to work on their marriage together, and they should. That's what the Bible says, you love and forgive. And all that. So you should be able to go ahead if you want to. Um, is it wrong for a woman to ask a guy out? What can we call what Ruth did with Boaz? Did she not ask him out? Of course she did not ask him out. Where did you see him, she, uh, her, asking uh, Boaz out? Ruth didn't ask Boaz out, oh, please. Mm-hmm. 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 And, um, and um, their own case was peculiar in the sense that in their own tradition, in their own um, way of doing things, if somebody's relative uh, marries somebody and the person dies, the next available relative should marry the woman. So what they were doing then was they were trying to comply with that law that if all her, or, um, if the family of her former husband is alive, they should marry her. So she wasn't really asking somebody on the road to marry her. Do we understand this? I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Do you understand what I'm saying? In those days, if a man and a woman marry, if the man dies, any family that the man has that is of marriageable age is supposed to marry that woman. Do you understand? That's their law. So what was happening was that she was just letting the man know that she was available and that the man should do what the law says to do. Not that she, and she didn't go and say it verbally. She didn't go and say, come and marry me. Now, in our own law, there's no such law, especially now in the kingdom of God. So to not be chasing a man up and down the town, you will just disgrace yourself. So don't do it for any reason. I have a full book there titled Should Ladies Propose? The answer is no. Socially, it is wrong because you will just give yourself a bad name. Can you imagine if we're in a church like this now, a girl toasts a uh, choir director, the guy in Ogri, and he will tell people, that girl they toast me. I shun him. She never knew anything. I know grief for her. She buy me flower, buy me uh, iPad, buy everything. I collect her more. Now the iPad that they use now, but I don't marry the guy. He would have told the guy, next week again or next month, you will toast Usher. Usher too, we say, uh, no, uh, you are too old for me. I'm not married. Before you know it, everybody you know in the church, once you greet any brother, say, hey, say, hey, what, what, is, what is it? <laughs> you, will, you will just disgrace your family. Mm. You will disgrace yourself. They will know you. They will know you as the girl that is toasting everybody in church. Before you know it, they will know you in the whole Lagos. They will know you for Lagos. So you will disgrace yourself. 
spiritually is also wrong. There's nowhere in the Bible where we saw a woman asking a man for marriage. Most times it was the men that did the asking or the proposing. Starting from Adam, it was Adam that did it like that. Structurally, it is wrong. In, in, in the structure of marriage, the man is supposed to be the head. If you are the one taking the lead now, you have already shown him that he is not the head. Let him take the lead. If he can't be bold enough to come and ask you, then he can't be bold enough to lead your home. Asking you is just one step. Oh, most of you have gotten married. You know, you will see, he will still go and talk to your father. So he needs to be bold enough to do what he needs to do. So don't do it for him. Do you understand? Then sexually too, it is wrong. Because the averagely, when you go and propose to a guy, you have made yourself vulnerable. I'm yet to see the girl that they are recommending, that they are sending her name as everything, that doesn't sleep with people easily. For you to be recommended, showing yourself everywhere, you are likely to be loose. You are cheap. Because it, most of the guys that do all those connections on the internet, one of their first aim is to first sleep with you. And for you to meet somebody on the internet, depending on for you and you come, you will see you will not sleep with him. You will likely, you are ready, you are desperate. That forum is a forum for people that are already desperate. The difference between meeting naturally and meeting in those kind of forums is that when you meet somebody naturally, you don't know what's in the person's mind. Do you understand? If I come to a church and after service, I meet a fine girl like this now. I say, hey, how are you doing? I don't know whether she wants marriage or not. I don't know whether she's engaged or not. You know what that means? I'll be talking to her with respect. I don't know what that's... But if I meet you on the forum where they say, this is where people are looking for a husband and wife. I see you there. I say, hey, this is fine girl, no girl husband. I say, come. Come. Come here. I'm calling you. Come. Because I know you're already desperate now. For you to come here. I say, come. Sit down. I'm coming back in two hours. Don't move. Sit down here. <laughs> you will disgrace yourself. You don't need it. You don't need it. The guy will make, I, most of those guys that are going to all this internet or a place where they're connecting people, you think you're the only option. You think it's only your name they submitted to him. They submitted many names. You are just a list. You are number, probably number six or number seven on the list. So he's calling all of you one by one. Giving you your own dates. You come Monday. If you miss your appointment, you miss the next week. Oh. You come Tuesday. He's arranging you. You are just an option. It's a disgraceful thing to find yourself doing. You are too glorious for that. You are too glorious for that. Sit down, let God settle you. Don't try to do it in your power. You just mess with the guy, the guy has many names. So many, many names from village, from everywhere to him. And may you not run into the other guy from village that they are sending to him. The guy will just pour hot water on you. So don't try it. It's never good. It never turns out right. It never turns out right. It's usually a forceful woman, an impatient woman that wants to propose to a man. She wants to take the lead in the home. It never turns out right. So don't do it. But get my message. I explained more there. Can a lady get married to a guy that is married to a white woman? Who has a daughter for him outside the country? Saying that it's a contract marriage. Very good question. And very common question these days. Very good question. Can a lady get married to a guy that is married to a white woman who has a daughter for him outside the country? Saying it's a contract marriage. See, eh? Like I said, me, I'm too simple. Why do you want to marry somebody that is desperate enough to marry for papers? You think if he needs to make ritual sacrifice for money, you think he will not do it? That guy has made it clear to you that he has one aim in life to make it and is ready to do what? Anything. Can include your children, can include you, can include... If, if, if he needs to marry three other times, if that's what will make him make it, this guy I'm seeing here will do it. You don't want a guy that doesn't have God at the center of his life. This person here doesn't know God, doesn't have God. He, he, the money, money is this person's God. Paper is this, person God, is this person's God. Foreign papers. You don't want that kind of a relationship. So what are you? Are you half wife or half caste? What are you when you marry somebody like this? And marriage is marriage. Whether it's contract marriage or not. In the eyes of God, marriage is marriage. God doesn't know what you're talking about by contract marriage. He doesn't recognize that. Marriage is marriage. And particularly in this case, where they already have a child. What do you, how do you think they got the child? What do you think? You think it's by uh, WhatsApp or BB? <laughs> think it's by Facebook they got the child. <laughs> so, my sister. Uh, and it, it sounds funny, but many women I know are in a situation like this. One guy abroad is toasting you, but he's married abroad to a white person. He's desperate for me. Let him... I mean, even if you wanted to marry for papers, eh? let him sit down and marry somebody he loves there and live there. Not that you marry one person and he also wants to come and marry you here. I mean, what are you? I mean, you, you're, you're, not, you're, not, you're not that cheap. It's because you don't value yourself. That's why you're even considering it. You know, you don't have value for yourself. 
in your mind, you know, you, you can be, you are, they are managing you. If you had value for yourself, you won't, you won't subject yourself. You even talk to a guy talking about this kind of thing. It's not, it's not you he's looking for. He's looking for one desperate girl that doesn't have a life. Not you. Do you understand? It's not you he's looking for. Somebody, can you imagine somebody that has purpose for her life? You tell her this thing. She will first slap you now. You go chop slap that day now. It's a woman that doesn't have purpose and doesn't have a life. Her only dream is to marry. That's the person that you can tell this thing that will be thinking about it. It doesn't make any sense. Is it proper for a man and a woman in a committed relationship to worship in different church? Because none of them wants to leave his or her church after marriage. Ah, after marriage, you must be, should be in one church. You should. Sometimes there are some strange situations that will make them be in different churches. But the good thing and the proper thing is for them to be in the same church. Okay? Like I said, you see, that's what I'm saying. I, I, and thank God it's coming up over and over again. How do you want to marry somebody that two of you can agree on where to worship? You are, the trouble has started before the marriage. You trouble, you are, in fact, you people are already settling quarrel before you start the marriage. What makes marriage? It's two of us must be, we must be seeing things in a certain way. Even if we don't see things 100% the same, but at least one person knows that I submit to another person. That's why there's a system in marriage. You say, wives, you submit. Husbands, you love. There's a system. If two of us can work it out at this stage, and we want, we're already trying to go different churches, we'll soon go different ways. So, there's already a, ch- a challenge here, from what I see. The problem here is not even church. Two of you probably like marriage too much. You're not even checking if the person you want to marry is the right person. Leave marriage. Check each other. Do you like each other? Are you thinking alike? Are you thinking alike? In building relationships that last, it begins with improving one's self-esteem. Looking beyond face value and choosing the right partner. You too can have the marriage of your dreams.